Hi guys, congratulations to all of you who managed to pass level 1 exam. It's a beautiful feeling, right? Now the question that many of you are going to have is, should I take the level 2 exam in 2019 or 2020? Especially the ones who've not been able to prepare in these last 40-50 uh, days, right? Because you are not sure that whether I'll be passing level 1 or not. So, uh, I'm getting a lot of these messages and I thought, okay, I'll make one video and hopefully uh, this will help you. So what I'll be doing now is I'll be, I have made a list of pros and cons of why we should consider exam in 2019 and 2020. And then I'm going to share my opinion on maybe what's the right approach. Look at the list that I have. The green ones in my list are the reasons uh, which are like in favor, like right? the pro ones. Uh, so first, why I think you should take exam in 2019. Most important, you're fresh with your level 1 concepts. You remember them, right? I hope so. Uh, you remember what was beta. You remember a little bit of about hypothesis testing. And trust me, you are going to need level 1 concepts for level 2. I mean, no matter who says what, uh, there, there are people who tell you you're not going to need them, but I'm 100% confident that level 1 base is extremely important for level 2. So now what's happening is level 1 is fresh, right? You remember it in bits and pieces. So it's going to help you for your level 2 exam. So that's one reason why we may consider the 2019 exam. Second, you're in a flow. Flow is uh, you have been studying consistently for last few months. Of course, you've had a small break in between, but you have studied uh, for last few months. And flow is important, especially for working people, right? It's difficult to come back from office and get back to studies again. But you have been doing it, so it's going to be easier now rather than waiting for a few months doing it. Third, most important, level 2 is once a year. So just think of it. You missed 2019 because you think, okay, 2020 is what I want to do. And if something goes wrong on that one day, anything can happen, right? So something goes wrong on that one day and then you're looking at 2021. So therefore, I think the cost of not taking the exam is too high, right? These are the reasons why I think uh, 2019 is more appropriate. What's the limitation? Uh, limitation or the negative of writing 2019? Two limitations. One, we have very limited time. Second, it's tough. Level one was relatively easier. It was manageable. Level two is not. Okay, uh, so what to do? I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Now let's think of 2020. Why one may consider taking exam in 2020? First reason, CFA exams are expensive for most of us, right? You almost end up spending what, $900,000? That's a lot of money. And you don't pass the exam, you lose the money. So maybe you, you think, okay, uh, 2019 is too much of risk. I don't want to do that. I want to play safe. So I'll probably go for 2020. That could be one reason. Second, it's tough. So by delaying your exam, you get more time to study. That could be the pros for writing exams in 2020. But what is the downside? And it's a very important downside, mind you. Every year I come across candidates who decide to delay the exam by one and a half year. Uh, and they come to me and, you know, we sit together, we make a study plan and this is this is a subject we're doing in this month and all of that. And then they come to me six months down the line saying, you know, Utkash, uh, I couldn't study. I just couldn't feel, you know, that motivation uh, because the exam was so far. And now again, we are left with six months. So now tell me a revised strategy to do it. So if you are someone who's very self-disciplined and you think you can like study you know, religiously, sincerely for a period of one and a half year, maybe uh, wait for 2020. But if you're someone who, who thinks that, okay, one and a half year is too much, I want to kind of get done with it quickly, maybe 2019 is the game. So how do you decide? So here is what I think. I would ask myself following questions. Okay, first question, can I put in, uh, this is primarily for working people, of course. Okay. So can I put in about three to four hours a day on every weekday, which is five days a week, Monday to Friday. Uh, can I put in that kind of time? That's my first condition. Second, Saturday and Sunday, can I invest at least eight to 10 hours each? Not cumulative. So can you put in eight to 10 hours on your weekends? Uh, because that's where we'll be doing a lot of practice and learning. Third, 
can you pull off at least 15 days of full time leave right so last 15 days before the exam uh, can you not go to office and somehow manage uh, 21 days is even better so if you if all the three conditions are yes 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 uh, i think june 2019 makes more sense even if your probability of passing is a little lesser right because the opportunity cost of your time is also going to be significant so there's a cost benefit ratio there uh, but if any one of these is a no like you think i can't do three hours uh, on a weekday uh, there's no way i can do it then probably 2020 is a better game for you uh, so i hope you find this video useful uh, if you have more questions put them on the comment and i'll try to reply all the best guys level two is a lot of fun I personally love the curriculum, equity valuations, derivative, fixed income. It's, it's the curriculum that takes you very, very close to practice. So enjoy the process and I'll be happy to help as usual.